bruschetta from local grown tomatoes, fresh sourdough, a lizard who'll eat anything even if it gives her a tummy ache, and a morning so gorgeous even the clouds hit the snooze button. We're in Airlie Beach, reminding ourselves that in the rush to get where we're going, let's not forget to enjoy where we are. We've just spent three days out at the reef, 50 nautical miles from mainland. We were absolutely blessed with a once in a lifetime experience with a couple of whales who spent the better part of half an hour swimming circles around us. This episode, we're making a dreary passage to Airlie Beach. While we're in Airlie, we'll be installing a wind gen on anchor, getting our land legs back and joining in on race week and other exciting things like... Laundry. Very different sailing conditions today than it was yesterday. Our passage to Airlie will be about 18 nautical miles, so it should take us just over three hours, hopefully under four. Um, we've got really strong southerly winds, so you can see it on the horizon there. But then every now and then, you see a whale spurt. So that's exciting. But yeah, it feels really nice and calm in this anchorage because we're protected. We're in the lee of the wind from this island here. So it's probably going to get hell uncomfortable once we get out there. But that's why I've taken Josh's rain jacket. Because <laughs> he's got his warm SES one. <laughs> I didn't know sailing the north coast would be so bloody cold. <laughs> but it's always nice picking up a mooring buoy because then we can just throw the line off and off we go. So that'll save us about 60 seconds, but every minute counts on a rainy day. <laughs> few other vessels taking advantage of this wind to get back to Airlie before this blow comes out. Two cats. And Josh is looking colder than ev ever. <laughs> so grateful that I didn't go for a sim this morning. It takes a long time for this head of hair to get warm. But I hit up the boys in the VHF because I wanted to see if anyone was on board so they could fly the drone because like I know how to fly it but not in windy conditions. Turns out everyone stayed on board except for Robbie who's a frother and Josh so <laughs> comes the cat that brings all the tourists to feed all the Maori rafts. Right on time. Well, eight minutes past. I don't have a watch. <laughs> so we're going to get off these moorings before they come here. Pahelion, Pahelion, Pahelion. Is this inner bloom, inner bloom? Do you copy? Yeah, yeah. We this tourist boat is chugging in now, so we might head off. How are you guys going? <laughs> All right, sounds good. We're gonna throw this morning light off and head. A little bit disheveled right now, but we're um, gonna go back into port, make the boat all nice and warm. And oh yeah, put the dehumidifier on. Yep, get the dehumidifier on. Our battery should be charged up by the time, well, maybe not, but we've got three days of strong winds now, so we're just gonna- So stoked we have our wind gen set up. <laughs> well, maybe that's something I can get organized while we're in LEB. Yeah. Because we have a generator, so realistically we could, if we got a boiler maker to come on board, we could probably do it on anchor, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Not on this big blow though. No. And by the time the big blow passes, we'll want to be going out somewhere else. That's True. the thing, you, you, there's always work to be done on the boat, but you don't want to do it when the weather's really nice because you want to be out there exploring. And then when the weather's not nice, it's either because it's raining, or usually it's because it's too windy to sail anywhere or to be comfortable on anchor, and you can't do any work on the boat when it's windy, so. <laughs> but yeah, we're just going to probably enjoy a little bit of downtime, do some washing. Edit some videos. Edit some videos. <laughs> sort out a little bit but of admin, talk to our family. For reference on how much fun that we're having at the moment, by the time that you're watching this... We'll be 30. The only... <laughs> and thriving. Yeah. By the time you watch this, whatever episode this is, episode 9 is out. That's the most recent video. That just goes to show, that just puts in perspective how far behind we are, but we're just having too much fun. <laughs> too much fun. Too much fun. <laughs> you now it's cold when the Canberra boy puts on two jumpers. I feel like you need to be putting something on your feet. Look how... <laughs> They're like gripping on for dear life. <laughs> Yeah.
we were struggling for speed initially, but we're doing consistently over five knots now. As long as we um, keep the wind enough over our our beam and not go too close to it, it's sort of consistently sort of 17 knots gusting over 20 and luckily it only just started getting windy about four or five hours ago so therefore the um wind chop is not so bad we have got a fair bit of a heel on and it's starting to rain a fair bit i was thinking before that our um head sail might not be doing enough work to um pick the boat up after it buries its nose and drive it back out because there's not enough sail area there but i think it might just be the point of sail is a little bit too close to the wind i'm having a fair fair away from our course a fair bit to to be able to keep over five knots of speed this has been a truly frustrating sail our number two head sail is just not pulling through fast it's not driving us out of the waves that we bury our nose in we kind of just end up wallowing a little bit and then seesawing and having a fall off the wind, speed up, and same thing happens. At the moment, we're kind of struggling to get over four knots, and the wind is still quite, quite over our, our beam. We're, it's a close reach, but we're still not, not within 45 degrees. And due to having a sail a lot further from the wind than I would if we had our number one sail, head sail up, gone quite a fair bit off course. Really looking forward to getting our our roller furler sorted at some point because we'll be as simple as furling out the headsail a little bit more and furling it back in between between gusts or wind showers. It's just a lot of work to drop the number two and get the number one up. We've only got the six mile to go until we're well into the lee of that early beach headland type thing. Good learning curve, I guess. I really despise this number two headsail. I tell you what, I get it confused quite often with our storm jib because they're very similar size. Something I am noticing though is how well balanced the boat is at the moment. I have no hands on the helm right now and we're holding course. Whereas if we had our number one up, we would have rounded up straight away. Our mains down, our head sails down. It's pouring rain. We've just been drying our number two head sail after our passage. It's so cold! Baby's freezing. <laughs> Let's do this! It's about dry now, so we're going to try and flake it and put it in the bag all together now. Rainy, rolly day on Inner Bloom today. Well, on all the boats in Sandridge today. We had a really beautiful morning in town. Went for our first like cafe experience. We're saying goodbye to our friend Nate, who's been cruising with the boys on Paheli, and he's flying back to WA today. And he's timed it perfectly because it's pretty gloomy in Ailey today. And now I'm just sitting down and taking advantage of the rainy weather, editing. Josh is getting some tools out because what you doing? Going back to work. See ya. Nice while it lasted. Yeah, no, I'm going to help a fella on a cat here who's having issues with his um, start batteries and house batteries not charging from his alternator. To me, I haven't done work for people, <laughs> paid work, so. I'm pimping you out. Phoebe's pimping me out. She's <laughs> like, go get that money and bring it back. Yeah. No, that's not what I we've, said. We've been. I said, don't come back unless you have money. We've been running into so many people. It's like it's like there's no one in Ellie Beach but people that we know now. Because this yeah. morning we ran into every single person that we knew. Yeah. Go and have some fun in the morning, but it takes you an extra hour and a half because of all the people that you see along the way. <laughs> um, speaking of, Al and Danny, I want to have two for one pizzas with us. Yeah, yeah. She sent me a that. message. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. It does sound good. I this is like perfect pizzas. pizza weather. Yeah. Um, and we haven't, we haven't like, pe people think that, you know, you're cruising on a boat, saving a lot of money, which you are, but people think because we're saving all that money, we're going out and, you know, eating really good food. We haven't eaten out since we started cruising. No. I wish I had a handkerchief to fly out. <laughs> Goodbye, my love. I have the cacao waiting for you. Okay. I'll tell you what, nothing really keeps love alive and your boyfriend going, did you poo? And then you go and yeah and then him going yeah it stinks and then you going 
Yeah, but it was an hour ago. And then him going, did you flush it? And then you going, yeah, I flushed it, babe. Like, and then him going, well, I'm glad I'm leaving. So now what I got to do to keep the love alive is check the black water hose and make sure that it's not leaking like before. We had an issue with the black water well pump a couple of weeks ago where the mechanism inside split. So now that I lift the floorboard up, this is it here. I can't see any black water on the, oh. Oh no, that's old. It's gotta do the feel around and the sniff. It smells okay. Well, I don't know what to tell you, babe. <laughs> We're also in the process of organising with some friends of ours now that we're in Airlie and we're close to an airport for them to come up and visit us. It's always funny introducing boat life to someone that hasn't lived on a boat before and kind of setting their expectations of how things work and all the little systems and stuff that they've got to be mindful of. How to use the head, what not to put in the head, how to operate the macerator, how to operate the water, being mindful of water usage, that everything you bring on board has to come off the boat at some point. Living on a sailboat takes away that commodious aspect of living on land. Having all those conveniences there, electricity, laundry, running hot water, microwaves, ovens. I often forget what it was like to have everything so readily accessible and available to us. When our friends visit now that we're in Airlie, it'll probably be four or five days to a week. It's gonna be really interesting seeing that stark contrast between people that live on land and people that live in the sailboat and us having to go through with them all of the little things that we do to make everything run smoothly on the boat. Our friends probably have an idea of what it's gonna be like living on a sailboat or staying on a sailboat for a holiday. But yeah, it's it, it's gonna be like camping on water, except the tent is 35 foot of steel and completely at the mercy of the elements. We went to the markets, now we're having bruschetta fresh early beach local locally grown and made Sonia's into the Sonia's greens. Sonia's having the sweet potato greens. Yeah Sonia! <laughs> Love, holy moly. She's hungry. Well we're on our way into town to early. I got a direct message on Instagram from an owner or someone that works at a um, juice bar and a, like a health bar. It's called Fruits and Roots. And they were like, if you want to come into the shop, lunch is on us. So we're really excited because it's the kind of food that we're totally into. We don't we don't <laughs> often eat out, so to have um to have someone shower us lunch is pretty special. Oh yeah, and well we have we have actually eaten out the past couple of nights because uh, one of the restaurants here. Um, called Sorrento's, they do a two for one pizza <laughs> in an afternoon from three to four. That is not a paid promotion. No, it's not. <laughs> we heard about it from Danny Allen Allen. They said, come have sundowners with us at the restaurant, you know, the day after next. But um, that day that we heard about it, it was kind of like a goodbye for all of the crew on Pahelion and getting everyone together. And Josh and I go, oh, we know a place that does two for one pizzas. Let's, let's have sundowners there. So we did that, it was great. Ate a lot of pizza and then we had to do it all again the next day. The company was enjoyable, but eating that much pizza uh, made us feel a little bit ill. So yeah, we're really keen to start eating some of that good good that we that we enjoy and that we love so much. Here it is now. <laughs> Look away! P PTSD, pizza, traumatic stress. A really nice walkway that we've been taking to get into town. There's a few places that you can pop your tender, but not as much as I was expecting, considering that this is such a capital or such an epicenter for yachting. Um, but yeah, we park our tender at the Marine Rescue. Marine Rescue? Or at the, the marina. Or the, or the boat ramp, yeah. Or the boat ramp, Coral whatever. Marina. Yeah, and then it's a short walk into town, which is really nice because it's, it's a beautiful walk. And we don't actually do a lot of walking <laughs> when you're living on a boat. It's really not as active as you think it was. Um, especially when you're going to a place that doesn't have any hikes or anything. You're just kind of swimming and reading and editing and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's good to be moving our bodies like this. It is really awesome to go and get some lunch because as I said, we don't do this often. Um, if we were doing it often, we wouldn't be able to sail for as long as we would or we'd have to go back to work. Uh, but we don't have to go back to work because we work online. Um, but unfortunately, our friends on Pahelion had to... Oh, wait till all those people walk past, it's too embarrassing. Yeah, so like Phoebe was saying, because we're working online, we don't have a deadline to return home. But the people that we have been sailing with have had to depart, begin their journey back south. So for the first time in... Three, three months. months. Yeah. We're on our own. <laughs> it's a bit weird. It's like... Calling our what own do we do? shots. <laughs> what making, do we talk about? <laughs> making our own tracks. <laughs> 
Yeah, we're yeah no, it, it's, it's, it's a bit weird because usually like of an afternoon we'll, or in, of the morning we'll like VHF the boys and we're like, hey, like what are you guys up to today? Where are you going? And we all get together and do something together. But yeah, it's just been us completely to our own devices now. So obviously we met those boys in um, Fraser and after Fraser we went to Lady Musgrave together and we were kind of all collaborating on the places, all the anchorages that we knew of and so we were kind of like creating our plans based on that. But now that we're just us, obviously we're going to get advice from the people that we meet, but it's completely up to us now where we go. It's only the opinions or desires of the two of us. Sonia doesn't really have a say, but she's stoked nonetheless. She would if she could. But yeah, it's really exciting to have the future completely in our hands um, and the next couple of months you know, uncharted or unplanned. It's interesting talking to all of the people, all the other cruises, and the major topic of conversation between everyone is like, where are you going? What are your plans? Are you going back up north? Are you going back down south? Because it's coming to the end of the season. Um, and the cool thing is, is we don't know just yet. <laughs> They just said that we can feel out or have a little, little taste test of what juice we want. And we can make our own little concoction as well. <laughs> good lord, that's so good. Oh my god, that's so refreshing. Get it in there. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Blue spirulina and coconut. Let it rip. That one tastes like jelly. AJ's like, try a couple, we're trying them all. Love all the, the kitty cats. Yeah, yeah. Ratchet's Lua. Lua. Dolphin. Is that your favorite too? Yeah. So that's got the mint similar? Yeah. It's got I might even, hear me out, hear, hear me out, hear me out. I might mix the island tango and watermelon. Uh, and the flamingo so that I can get watermelon in with all the other ones. Island, what island, do you think, Sonia? Mad shout out to AJ and Mandy at Fruits and Roots in Airlie Beach for giving us some cold pressed goodness on tap. This place was insane. It reminded me of our Byron days. It was so special. Thanks, guys. If I had scurvy before, I don't anymore, baby. Good. <laughs> so we met Mandy and AJ, who are the, the owners of Fruits and Roots. And they're sailors too, or they have a dream of sailing in a couple of years. The reason I'm frothing so hard is because I've had every kombucha flavor that there is to taste, all manner of juice, but then we're having for lunch a salad. Well, I'm having a salad, Phoebe's having a toasted sandwich. And um, this salad is a, oh, Sonia. Wow, look at the beard, flair. You're right, darling. Be the safety that you need. Anyways, Anyways <laughs> um, I had this salad for the first time when I was in Hawaii, and it's a broccoli, cranberry, and bacon salad, and far out. Yeah, I've just had this salad for the first time since Hawaii, and it's just bringing back major memories. So I'm, I'm, yeah, pretty stoked. Felt oh, really nice. It's probably the first locals that we've connected with um, that are kind of on the same level as us. Eh? Yum. <laughs> This video was intended as a get to know us slash doing a haircut at the same time. Yeah, like our journey with sailing, how we got started, how we met, what we were doing before we were sailing. And I didn't, I kind of underestimated my ability to cut hair and talk at the same time. So we were going off course and got a little bit heated. And so I just kind of big shushed and concentrated on cutting his hair and couldn't even do that. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe Phoebe was getting a bit nervous about how quickly I was catching up to her in length because <laughs> as you can see, it didn't turn I had to out so good. jeopardize you. Look. <laughs> Please, sir, can I have my hair back? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Anyways, we'll do another, we'll do like a video like that in the future when I'm not cutting his We'd hair. We'd love you to get to know us, but first I gotta grow some hair back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you next episode. See ya.